Travelers entering Nigeria through the Lagos International Airport from any part of the world have to wait a while as the coronavirus screenings include a check through the self-reporting forms to ensure that passengers are providing the right information. Some countries in West Africa are closing their borders to other countries that have large number of the COVID-19 cases. On the program, we take a look at the measures that different countries are adopting to protect themselves plus a report on the enhanced e-passport. Thank you so much for joining us on Aviation This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Ju Ukitumbi. As the coronavirus persists, especially in Europe, Many countries are now self-isolating. The Ukrainian Border Guard Service reports it cracked down on attempts to smuggle face masks abroad after 50,000 of them alone were seized from a car on the Polish border. Ukraine has also banned the export of face masks, which the Customs Service said had become a more popular item to smuggle across the border than cigarettes. The capital, Kiev, announced on Monday the closure of bars, restaurants, cafes and shopping malls and said people's movements to other towns should be restricted as much as possible. Other towns and cities, including Lviv and Odessa, passed similar measures. <coughs> For the European Union's executive arm, the closing of borders is not the best way to contain the spread of the coronavirus inside what is normally Europe's cherished zone of free travel. European Commission spokesman said any border measures must be well coordinated to prevent them from aggravating the crisis by impeding food or medical supplies. Now to Germany, where border controls on its frontiers with Austria, Switzerland, France, Luxembourg and Denmark has been implemented as the country seeks to curb a rapid spread of the coronavirus. The Commission's position, the assessment that we have, is that um, the virus is, at the moment we speak, uh, already in, uh, present in all European member states. And therefore, uh, that um, closing borders um, uh, is not necessarily the uh, best way of ensuring that we can contain further uh, the outbreak within the uh, European Union. But at the same time, we recognize that member states have been acting um, in accordance with the information that, uh, that they had um, and to do what uh, they considered in the context of their responsibilities um, as best for, to protect the health of their citizens. <laughs> the majority of Britons continued with their normal commute Central London was slightly quieter than usual, but trains arriving at Charing Cross Station were still bringing thousands of workers and shoppers into the city centre. Britain appears to have taken a distinctly different approach to tackling the coronavirus from other European countries. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has asked manufacturers to retool production to start making specialist health equipment, including ventilators, and will look at using hotels as emergency hospitals to cope with the coronavirus outbreak. Here in Africa, thousands of students were seen leaving Sheikh Antidiop University in Dakar after the government ordered all schools and universities to close in response to the coronavirus outbreak. Senegal has recorded 26 cases, most of them in the holy city of Touba, when one Senegalese man who recently returned from Italy attended a large religious ceremony, students on their way home, some in rural areas, were hoping to be able to relay information they had learned about the virus to their communities. Preventing and reducing the South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has announced a range of extraordinary measures to contain a COVID-19 outbreak that has affected 61 so far. Measures to be taken to limit its spread include travel bans to high-risk countries such as Italy, Iran, South Korea, Spain, Germany, 
the United States, the United Kingdom and China. As from March the 18th, President Ramaphosa also encouraged South Africans to refrain from international travel and urged for limited social gatherings. Ghana is closing its borders to travelers from countries with more than 200 cases of the coronavirus as the West African nation seeks to prevent contagion within its borders. The government is asking airlines to prevent affected travelers from boarding flight, while citizens and resident permit holders will be required to self-isolate for 14 days on arrival. Back home in Nigeria, any recent international traveler will encounter health officers briefly pointing a thermometer gun at your forehead or watching as you go by to check for signs of a cough or difficulty in breathing. Health officials are now watching arriving and departing air passengers who might suffer from the viral disease COVID-19. As passengers are also required to fill out health declarations. It is not a swift exercise. It may require a dosage of patience, but many passengers are happy with the process. I think the screening process is good. It's a, it, a bit chaotic, but I, I, I see that um, a lot of efforts have been put into it to ensure that this virus doesn't come into country. And there's um, so much seriousness I see in Nigeria if I compare to other countries that we've been to. I find it nice, you know, because uh, uh, the whole world is trying to protect its own citizen. So they, they should do more, they should put more interest to protect the Nigerian citizen. So I was about to fly on Saturday, but it was not necessary for us to fly because of the coronavirus situation. So the airport, uh, the airline we were about to use was shut down. So then I decided to buy another airline from Ethiopia airline to move down to Nigeria to see my family. They have reason to be. Some have transited through two airports and observed zero checks. By the time we were coming out of Tel Aviv, they had over 200 cases. All tourists are asked to evacuate the country and none are being allowed to come in. So uh, in terms of health control, they're not doing much. But I think what they are doing is preventing people from coming in. In uh, Kenya, yes, the earth shake is pretty good. They are checking for temperature. You have. Uh, uh, and sanitizers and there is a bit of uh, awareness as well, okay? Uh, but I would say we are more aware than they are in Kenya and for Addis Ababa, though we're just transiting, so uh, it was just pretty much filling the form and, and sanitizer usage and all of that were not really heavy, yeah. Evaluating and quizzing passengers, otherwise known as entry screening, dawn and arrival at the destination airports can be an opportunity to gather contact information which will be useful if it turns out an infection did spread during a flight and to give passengers guidance on what to do if they become ill. On our interview segment, we'll bring you the latest decisions by the federal government, which includes restricting entry into the country for travelers from 13 countries. We have found it necessary to brief Nigerians on further measures being taken after an assessment of the global situation. They are as follows. One, the federal government of Nigeria is restricting entry into the country for travelers from the following 13 nations. China, Italy, Iran, South Korea, Spain, Japan, France, Germany, Norway, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, and Switzerland. These are all countries with over 1,000 cases domestically all persons arriving number two all persons arriving in nigeria who might have visited these countries 15 days prior to such arrival will be subjected to supervised self-isolation and testing for 14 days the federal government is number three the federal government is temporarily suspending the issuance of all visas on arrival. Number four, 
The federal government is also counseling all Nigerians to cancel or postpone all non-essential travels to these countries. And number five, the federal government urges public health authorities of countries with high burden to conduct diligent departure screening of passengers and also in doses travel advisories to their nationals to postpone travels to Nigeria. And fourthly, these restrictions will come into effect from Saturday 21st of March 2020 and it will last for the following four weeks subject to review as the situation. Now to El Salvador where an aeronautical firm is providing new opportunities for citizens in this poor nation who would otherwise consider migrating to the United States. Here, young Salvadorans have received a scholarship for underground training at Aeroman. They are the beneficiaries of a program partly financed by the United States called Formiliano II, which aims to provide locals with employment opportunities back home without having to emigrate. For the majority of youths, that is something that crosses their mind. In my case, I didn't do it because of my family. I didn't want to leave my family. Perhaps I could have gotten ahead bit by bit. Formuliano II was conceived in 2014 and now has the backing of bodies such as the European Union Aviation Safety Agency and the United States Federal Aviation Administration. At the end of this placement, candidates are eligible for official posts in participating companies. Various colleagues I studied with have not had the same opportunities, and they emigrated over there, risking their lives on the way to the United States. One of the aims for these different projects and activities that are being financed is to tackle this desire to emigrate. Authorities hope that programs such as this will turn around numbers of Salvadorans heading to the United States, whilst also tackling poverty back home. Any passport office is a mecca of some sorts for international travellers. That's simply because no one can cross international borders without this vital document. The International Civil Aviation Organization issues passport standards, which are treated as recommendations to national governments. The size of passport booklets normally complies with the ISO slash IEC 7810 ID-3 standard, which specifies a size of 125 by 88 millimeters. Biometric passport or re-passports were introduced in Nigeria first in May 2007. After 11 years, the federal government in January 2020 announced new reforms which birthed what is now called the Enhanced E-Passport. The, the Passport Control Officer at the Eco e passport Office explains the difference. This is the current E-Passport that is also ongoing. It's being issued in several centers, but January last year, to be exact, on the 15th of that month, Mr. President was issued with the new enhanced e-passport. And this is the enhanced e-passport. One of the major differences between this one and this one is enhancement or additional 25 security features that have been embedded in the new passport. This. And then secondly, this one is not laminated data page. It is polycarbonate. Technology. With these new features come different categories as well. You know, normally Nigerian passports are of three types. There is the green passport, which is considered to be the standard passport. There is also the blue passport, which is official passport. And there is the red passport, which is the dipl diplomatic passport. So these are the three categories. But out of these three, two are issued at the service headquarters. The blue official passport and the red diplomatic passport. You can only be obtained in the, in the service headquarters. So the only one we issued here in Ekoi is the green passport. And this green passport also is of three categories. One of the categories is like this one. 
is 32 pages, and the validity of this one is five years. So applicants are advised to go all minors. Any applicant of first who is below the age of 18, he is to obtain the 32 page booklet for five years validity. But even adults can go for the 32. Obtaining this new passport usually starts with an online application and finishes where the applicant is captured. It goes through personalization and also quality assurance to meet ACAO standard as stipulated. From production units, we also have an officer on standby that does the calling. We call applicants in, they'll sit down, then do the biometrics, which is the last stage. You register your passport and we're done with you in the Koyu passport office. We ask applicants to share their experience. The process here, actually, it's not, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You know, the only thing is we are we are populated, we are much, and so when we came in, we have to wait for the for, for, for our right turn. That, that was the only delay that we are having, and the place is, is okay. But the, the matter of fact is that we need um, the government, you know, to make it more easier for, for us, so that when we came, we will not wait like this. But we believe the, the officers are doing their best. I think my experience has been better than what I actually thought, uh, the process has been straightforward, not that active. I actually started you know, making an inquiry this week, that was on Monday, but today is my first visit here and uh, I'm done with everything I have to do. At the moment, the Ikoi Passport Office is the only place approved for the issuance of the enhanced e-passport and no Nigerian can get this passport without the new one. The installation of the CAT-3 equipment is at an advanced stage and the situation is much better, which has led to flights landing back in the country. This comes on the heels of the issue of the diversions that occurred late 2019 and early 2020 caused a lot of chaos. Uh, it's a gradual process. Uh, category 3 is a very sensitive equipment that requires power supply stability, uh, perimeter fencing, the markings, and the protection of the sensitive area where you have the transmitters. So physical protection of the areas, demarcations or markings of where aircraft can hold, movements of vehicles and uh, personnel around the facility must be controlled. Incursions by animals must be prevented because the equipment is very, very sensitive. There is a requirement for airborne equipage. The airlines must be equipped, the flight crew must be trained, and the operators must also be approved by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority to also conduct Category 3 instrument landing. So, we, as a backup, we also have Category 1 and 2 procedures. For those that don't have the capacity for Category 3, they can still use the same equipment and conduct the approach and landing using the category for which they have approval to operate. Domestic carrier Airpeace has announced measures for protecting its numerous passengers and staff against the spread of coronavirus COVID-19. The airline safety manager, Captain Godfrey Ogbogu, made this known explaining that all passengers of the airline will be subjected to a hand sanitization at the boarding gate. He said that the airline had also introduced temperature checks for all passengers before boarding. The Nigerian Immigration Service has disclosed that the country has recorded a drastic reduction in the issuance of visa on arrival at many of the country's international airport as a result of coronavirus currently ravaging the globe. At the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, it disclosed that a total of 265 on arrival visas were issued in February as against 440 in January by the NIS at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, a decline of 175. This shows the implication of COVID-19 to business investors to Nigeria or ease of doing business in the country. But both the Port Health and Immigration personnel have been working assiduously to ensure effective coverage, especially in the area of yellow fever cards. 
Turkish Airlines says it will continue to prioritize safety measures to minimize the effects and spread of COVID-19, both for its customers and air crew. In line with the guidelines of both local and international civil aviation authorities, all Turkish Airlines planes are now disinfected with substances approved by the World Health Organization and aircraft manufacturers as part of safety measures. Faced with these growing restrictions on the possibility of travelling and a strong downward trend in demand, which has resulted in a drop in traffic and sales over the last few weeks, the Air France KLM said it has been forced to reduce capacity scheduled to last for two months. As a result of the reduction in capacity, Air France disclosed that it had concluded its time to ground its entire Airbus 380 fleet and KLM its entire Boeing 747 fleet. To deal with this situation, the group has already taken a number of strong measures to secure its cash flow, such as it said additional savings measures have been identified, which will generate 200 million euros in 2020. Airlines in the UK have warned that aviation industry may not survive the coronavirus pandemic without emergency financial support. Bosses at Virgin Atlantic are expected to have written to the Prime Minister to ask for emergency financial measures for airlines in the UK. US travel restrictions will hit all transatlantic routes from Tuesday, further denting the aviation sector. The government said it was open to supporting firms, including airlines. It's bye for now on the program. See you next time. Ambukola Joe Ketumbi.